they'll blanket you in Wi-Fi and profit off the radiation congregation collecting the people for that Satan I keeps it blazing cause I can read between the lines I find what they're really saying genetically modify what you're tasting don't need that cottage promise so now you live up in your mom's basement redesign time so your mind is always wasted program to crave the basics keep the beta in stasis pay the state kid you're in debt for being born messengers are more than just the price for being worn don't be alarmed disconnect from their machinations stop subscribing to the folly of own nations bone breaking ain't the answer because they seek the ownership of souls spread the seeds and watch them grow break the chains of control Break the chains of control. Sweet eternal balance of all that is good, true, and beautiful, friends. Tonight on Rogue Ways, where we are blessed to have back with us the one and only inner Versian mystic of the most mind-opening metaphysics and wavelengths one can find, and one of the few who truly treads the middle path between reality and everything else in the universe. He is the powerhouse of presence and depth of thought that dives deeper than most rabbit holes and beyond the font of most wells. He is the I Ching oracle reader who brings the heart-centered connection to channel truth into this realm from beyond. And he is the soul-guided badass who weaves and wanders farther than most to bring us all back to the choicest nuggets of goodness and reminders of our never-ending essence, anchoring it all right together here, right here, right now. It's Chance Garden of Interverse. Chance, welcome back to Rogue Ways. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Uh... I'm amazed, though, that I have any knowledge about anything outside of reality. <laughs> Since technically, wouldn't that it'd be everything? I, I'm just kidding. But. <laughs> I feel like reality is what we call this, like, construct that the Archons have, like, placed around, like, mind control, and that actually everything else is out there, like, beyond that. But I totally get what you mean. What is reality if not everything? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, we should have a conversation about archons sometimes. So sometime, I think we'd, we'd have some, uh, it would be really interesting because we might have a different perspective on this and we might come to some common ground in the middle that we both learn from. That would be rad. We could do a, what is reality and who are the archons <laughs> some, some episode down the road. Um, but I do want to remind people the one day of brightness event is now over sadly and it's done and won't return until the summer solstice where our guest today will actually be both a practitioner teacher and a participant. Yes, Chance says that he'll come with us, so I'm very excited for that. Uh, so be sure to catch the next one, re-energize your soul and journey, uplift your heart and mind. It's seriously more amazing than, like, everyone who comes is like, wow, I did not expect it to be like this. This has been amazing. So, like, really just open your mind to what you think it could be and, and come check it out next time, especially if you've been wondering what it's like. Um, and then also remember to check out rogueways.org to connect with me, grab a reading, a soul session, get some spiritual healing, some orgone pendants, and so much more. And always come join the conversation and conscious community at rogue.locals.com. And finally, head over to Rockfin if you haven't yet. Make sure to follow Rogueways and the new show Middle Path, especially as a backup, because you never know what YouTube is going to do. And now, finally, chance for the pointless question of the episode. What is your favorite frosting? since you just had a birthday. Oh, that's an easy one. Although I go with the uh, cookie cake for my birthday. That's what my mom does for me every nice. year. And every <laughs> year I make it just like, I up the challenge a little bit. Like first it was, you gotta do it without dairy. Then it was, you gotta do it without eggs. And this year it was, let's get uh, stevia instead of sugar. Nice. So I'm getting myself a more high quality more expensive cake every year next time i'm gonna be like okay we're gonna figure out a gluten-free way to do it and i think that if we also get organic i don't know if i can get any more perfect but frosting i know i just kind of diverted the question <laughs> you went into the best cake Probably like <laughs> peanut butter frosting Ooh, i'm a, yeah. basically a dog at heart or strawberry frosting is pretty awesome too it's like or lemon Lemon. It's just like, you never know. Sometimes a lemon frosting can surprise you. It's just got that perfect tang to it. And you're like, yeah. Lemon, so, lemon that was an easy one. Try that... harder next time. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry I didn't question. stump you. <laughs> I was like, we could, I could go either way. Like if we're talking about like canned, like horrifying substance frosting, then I'm going to go for that. Like, what is it called? It has like the little colorful confetti dots in it. 
It's awful. That's my favorite, like, from a tub. And otherwise, if we're going to go, like, actually good frosting, I just like cream cheese frosting. I'm just a plain, plain lady. But happy birthday either way. Everybody out there can wish Chance a happy birthday. Um, you have revolved again around the sun if that's how things work around here. Or something, yeah. Something Birthday's like a that. funny topic, too, because wasn't I live nine months before that? Yes. Relatively? I love that that's idea. It's a whole rabbit hole. I have that magical 322 birthday, Illuminati confirmed, skull and bones, that type of thing. So I'm wearing, I'm wearing my shirt for it. Oh, yeah. People <laughs> are... It's a Mark Passio shirt in case anyone's like actually worried about that. It's uh, it says one great work. It's, it's, it's a good shirt. It's anti-Illuminati. Yes. Yeah. You, you were yeah, born like on that day. The real meaning of the Illuminati. Yeah. Not the fake club in Illuminati, but the concept of being illuminated. Not the you Archon. Know, the uh, sorcerers don't own that. Right. You were bored on 322 just to balance out some of that shitty energy. So that's what I'll, I'll go with. Dude, more <laughs> like, that's just a great day. Like anytime around the vernal equinox, it's so good. That's when the year used to start, actually. That's why you have months like October being the 10th month when it should have been the 8th month. And if you look at uh, down the line, take it to December. December's deck, DEC, should have been the 10th month. So they screwed it up. I should have been the beginning of the year. But yeah, I truly. love the explosion of springtime energy. There's like, if nuclear bombs were real, springtime would be the equivalent of a nuclear bomb of life just yeah. exploding everywhere on the planet at once. That's why I'm like worried that the spring solstice one day of brightness we just did is going to be like the best and we'll never be able to top it until next spring because it was just so much like energy coming through for us. But, you know, it makes sense that the death cult would move the beginning of the year to the moment of the, you know, deepest, darkest death of the sun and like and whatnot. So it's not that it's not that surprising. Um, yeah, that's a whole story it has to do with Janus and uh, <laughs> the just the shuffling around of uh, archetypal characters in the form of gods to obscure the fact that every one of these cults is actually heliocentric, as in the sun is the character that they're masquerading around as all these other various planetary gods. You could call it the uh, daemon of many names as an author I really like, Dylan Sococcio calls it in his Spirit World series, which mm -hmm. Lindsay just picked up that book. Super recommend it. It'll give you the scoop on how Everything in mythology and religion is actually, I mean, people are already onto this. I know you've talked about uh, astrotheology before, but as far as like a syncretism book, it's the tops because he also works in so much of the uh, word magic, green language side of things. That's a book that I highly recommend. And in spirit world, like world, W-H-I-R-L-E-D. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the world is world of words. Yes, it is. So check that book out. He also just got an audiobook version uh, of the first one. It's a three-part series. Really readable, really mind-blowing. Very. I'm very, very... And she just put it in the chat. Yeah. And I'm super happy with it so far. I, I mean, I got like 12 pages in and started like... Crying isn't the right word because there weren't like just tears streaming down my face. But like my eyes got moist and I had like this feeling. And I was like, what is it that I'm feeling? And I was like, oh, it's relief that like someone has seen so clearly and communicated so clearly these amazing truths. You like, a lot of them are like things that you may have known or come across or like understood at some level, but the way they're all strung together, especially like brings you somewhere new and it's really beautiful. And I'm only like a chapter or two in. So I already am highly recommending it as well. Thank you for turning me on to that book. And I'm very excited because um, hopefully we'll have Dylan on this show sooner or later. Yeah, put in a good word for sure. Uh, I know that you guys could have an awesome conversation, especially after you read that book. You're gonna be, you're gonna have all kinds of notes that you're gonna want to bring up. Yeah. He's a he's a good one, for sure. And then this is someone said in the chat, "Welcome to the next best year of your life." I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I actually have a hack for people. If you want to have the best day of your life every day, then just remember that today is the day that you're at the height of your experience and your powers and your wisdom, no matter what might be going on, everything that's behind you has leveled you up and it was all experience points. Even if you had to repeat some levels, you're still getting, you're still getting more vast and expansive. So 
every day in a row that you can remember it's the best day of your life, you can get on a hot streak. And it feels really good to be on like 50 days in a row. This is the 50th day in a row that is the best day of my life. And all you had yeah. to do was remember that it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true when people are like, oh, I hate getting older or whatever. I'm like, well, yeah, it's like harder and harder, I think, to keep your body in like good maintenance. Maybe that might not even be true for some people, but maybe for those of us who like trashed our bodies earlier and we're like just now catching up. But like you said, you're like leveling up each year. Each year you have like more and more experience. You have more and more um what's the word for point of view perspicacity nope that's not it perspective uh <laughs> and like more and more ability to deal with your emotions you have a clear and clear mind hopefully if you stayed healthy and have good luck and just all of these things get better and better so like i don't know what did you lose your ignorance your folly your like your inability your lack of skills like that's not those aren't bad things to lose but Anyways, plus I'm like super it, looking forward. You never forward. even lose your ignorance. It's actually you just get to know that your ignorance is there. That's and that's true. the that's the real <laughs> trick. You that's know, true. you're like, oh. And then the ignorance becomes uh, a type of superpower. It is it's not really ignorance anymore. It's uh agnosis instead of ignorance. And agnosis is it sounds like it's bad because it's the opposite of gnosis, but it actually is the part where you don't know yet and you're getting to find out. So that's like the real good part of life. That's the actual path. That's the journey. So always agnosis, really. It's really beautiful. And people have asked me before, like, why are you obsessed with all of this stuff? And I'm like, I don't think I'm obsessed with anything, but I do have like a fixation on mystery and I want to dive deeper into mystery. And it's that same sort of idea. Like I want to go into anything I don't know. I want to find out more about it. So like, no, but you have to know what you don't know <laughs> in order to do that. But that is one of the best parts of life. Yeah, you know, I see someone in the chat that's excited about I Ching. And I, I don't know, do you think that we should go straight dive into that? <laughs> should, we, should we skip? I don't know. Should we skip the solfeggio? Let's just see what the chat says real quick. We had we were going to talk about solfeggio a little bit a because little bit. I I uh, got Tony Forks for my birthday on the birthday subject and their replacement for a set that I had last year that got misplaced. I don't know what happened. Someone else needed uh, them. So anyway, <laughs> I got a whole new set though of the solfeggio frequencies and they're really nice. I'll just yeah, let's just play a, a couple tones and then we'll we'll move on. Okay. So. <clears throat> I'll explain kind of this idea that I had about the solfeggio whenever I play these forks. What's interesting I, I noticed about them is that they had a pattern to what the actual frequencies were. It's measured in Hertz, but I don't like that word. I'd rather just call it cycles per second or cycles because Hertz is a family name and they're not historically one of the nicer families, right? And anyway. Yeah, we don't want to give tangent. them energy. Yeah, I mean, also, yeah, it's a weird word. It sounds like it hurts. And this is the opposite of what you want to do with your tuning forks. So I got this set, it came with nine, which is a great number. That means that you have one through nine right there. And they're patterned in this cool way where all of the ones, fours, and set, all the uh, forks that have a one also have a four and a seven. So like you've got one that's one, seven, four, one that's four, one, seven, basically. and I thought that was really neat because that type of frequency to me represents a form of kind of like wholeness or unity on a numerical numerology type of vibe. Yeah. Because you have the one, which is obviously the all, right? The one. Then you have four, which when you add the digits between one and four, one plus two plus three plus four, it gets 10, which oh. would reduce back to one. And actually the same thing happens if you add the digits between one through seven and all the way down through the line, uh, every, every, I guess that would be three numbers. The next number actually reduces to one. So wow. 10 obviously, and then 13 and, uh, it goes on. And anyway, <clears throat> hopefully I'm not explaining this too poorly, but I, I see the one, seven, four Hertz kind of because it's containing those three of the nine numbers representing that idea of a wholeness or oneness. So yeah. I like that one a lot. This is uh, the lowest frequency one that I've, I received. It's the 174. I'll play it down here and we'll see if it's not too unpleasing. 
We had to practice this to not get a loud ping at the beginning. So hold it up here. It's perfect. I think it's audible because I couldn't hear Lindsay speak, so it means it's muting her out. Yes. Cool. So it's perfect. Yeah, so that's the sound of the 174. And man, biofield tuning is so interesting, guys. We're not going to get into it too deeply, but the work of Eileen Day McCusick with a book called Electric Body, Electric Health, look her up. That is a book that will blow your mind. She has a whole theory of the biofield anatomy that she came to by working in people's energy fields using these tuning forks. <laughs> oh, cool. It's good in headphones. I'm glad that that is the case, that it didn't sound bad. I tried this yeah. on a live stream last year and I did horribly. I did not practice it. I had like the onboard mic of a laptop and not my interface. And it was a bad idea. So <laughs> glad it sounded better. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounded great. Yeah. And I, you're cool. also the one who turned me on to biofield field tuning and, and, um, Eileen Damon Cusick. And I also hope to get, uh, read that book and have her on as well, but you, people can go check out. You did a great interview with her if they want to, you know, one of my favorites ever. Yeah. She's kind of like, <laughs> we were talking before about the, uh, before the stream about like, getting nervous meeting your heroes. And Eileen is definitely one of my heroes. I was so excited to talk to her. And now, just like you and like many other people I interview, I get to have a uh, conversation with people like you and her whenever I want. I just hit them up and pretty sweet. Yeah. And yeah, Eileen also did a great episode with Crow. Someone mentioned in the chat, Crow, uh, that is a good place to listen to her as well. Also on the Higher Side Chats, a show that we both love. Eileen's been on there. And what was a funny synchronicity is right after I told Lindsay about Eileen's work and we had this conversation about entities, uh, angels and demons, so to speak, to simplify it, that very week, Mysterious Universe podcast put out a show about that exact thing. And then the second half of their show was about Eileen's new book and biofield tuning. And I was like, <laughs> that's so crazy. That's so cool. It's the same week, completely unrelated shows are covering the same material exactly so wild and we had talked about being a fan fans of that show so i had to share that funny sync with the audience that's super cool super cool yeah i love mysterious universe and all those shows so it makes sense like we'd all be on the sort of similar wavelength and i swear to god i'll have a show you know and people will be like oh you must have just watched crow because this person was just on there i'm like i haven't listened to that i had no idea like i had zero they'll be like oh this was just on so and so as a and another show i'm like i seriously like i don't go around just like listening to people and like and i wouldn't even be able to because i plan things like a month ahead so like i wouldn't even know what the other show was going to be doing but it just happened i think it happens that way for a reason because i think those are the types of ideas that people you know we need to understand more deeply as a collective or something you know or it's just like perfect timing for whatever reason and i just think that's how things work out but i wanted to mention something i noticed because you you know were showing me like you're like look what at these numbers and and the cycles and you know what what kind of patterns do you see and i was like uh i don't know i see like jumps of like 111 in between some of them and that was one thing i noticed and then i noticed too that uh, cause you're like, no, look at like each number. And I was like, oh, each actually within each number. So like one, four, seven is an example, right? From one to four is three. And from four to seven is three from one to seven is six. So there's like a three and a six embedded in there. And then in some of them, there'd be a, a three, a six and a nine embedded in there. And there's, I think two or three different of the actual solfeggio tones that have three, six and nine as the actual, like 369, 693, like whatever, as the actual like cycles itself. Yeah, the whole thing is woven with this pattern of 369 throughout it. And you're right, uh, just as all the ones, sevens, and fours are together in these solfeggio tones, the, all the three sixes and nines are grouped together. So 693, 369, you know, it goes like that. And then, <laughs> so that means the other three integers are also clustered together. So you have like three sets of three in a way. And now that I'm thinking about it, this is kind of I Ching-like because I Ching is based in these trigrams, which are three Ooh. lines or broken lines. So Dude. kind of uh, that kind of <laughs> does fit. So anyway, the other integers that are together are two, five, eight. And sort of my thing, I'll play the two, the two, eight, five yeah. cycles one I've got right here first. And then I'll kind of, this one's the one that I'm maybe least sure about sort of the significance of the frequency, but we can see if we can intuit something.
if you wiggle it, you can get a cool like. <laughs> type, it feels like a binaural thing. Yeah. Yeah. I so, felt that in my <laughs> like, uh, you know, the Ming Men acupuncture point. I don't know which point that is. It's like directly behind your belly button. And it, so it's the first cells your body ever had or whatever. <laughs> um, and so it's like if you put your finger in your belly button, you can put your finger on your back and see where they would kind of meet. That's your on your back is your Ming Men acupuncture. And I feel like it like went right there for me. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I kind of feel the same thing, actually, now that you're mentioning that. Uh, Right when I when I was like, "What's the Ming Ming point?" I felt like this. It felt like a bubble popped in my belly button. Whoa! Was, and then you started to explain it. I was like, "Okay." He felt it. <laughs> Body was gonna just tell me if I asked it. Apparently, so. Oh, and Jenny. The chat said their dog. Yeah. Came running. <laughs> That's awesome. So I was like, "What's up? Let's do this." <laughs> and you know what? That's actually really an interesting. Uh, thing that it would stimulate that because it sort of fits into what I was thinking about the significance of two, five, and eight together. Hmm. So that speaks to the idea of polarities, in my opinion. You have two, which is like the original duality, hmm. right? Male and female, gender. If five, which is sort of like, first of all, it's half of 10. So in that sense, it is a duality representation. But then two also has a perfect you have a with five a perfect balance between a couple of pairs with the one in the middle so that's yeah that's that and then eight is obviously two sets of four and it looks like two complete circles mm. with each other it makes the infinity mm -hmm. sign so i was intuiting that these uh with the two fives and eights in them were something to do with like uh generation kind of like a six type of the a deal uh or maybe even balancing between polarities or balancing your negative and positive charge. So that kind of is something to do with it too, but something to do with like birth and uh, like sort of reproduction, that type of vibe, but yeah. also with polarity and balancing polarity. That's sort of the, the, the gist I feel out of the significance of those numbers together. And then the three, six, nine, to me, that feels like some sort of scalar, uh, electric building, like just charge up like energy type of pattern, just like the raw life force energy. But I could be wrong about that. But three, six, nine, there's probably all kinds of mysteries in, in that. I'll play one of those too. And we can maybe, maybe mosey into some I Ching. Who knows? <laughs> I'll go all the way up to the top of the nine, the nine, six, three. Okay. It kind of has kind of made me straighten my spine a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I felt that too. And I felt like in the top of my head is where it wanted to sit mostly, but I feel like it was doing like a whole circuit throughout my like body too. Very cool. Well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> these Thank are you. new for me. So I'm really enjoying any time to like this. These are the first people I've ever used them on. <laughs> you, you christened them with us. Thank you. Yeah. What an yeah. honor. <laughs> Yeah, I like these. Uh, they seem to have an energizing effect. And I had a solar chakra, like a harmonic chakra set before. And that was more of a sedative and relaxing effect. And I think my personality type might fit the solfeggio bright tone, kind of high energy instead of relaxation set. So yeah. But speaking of energy, there's another thing I wanted to do, doing all kinds of fun stuff today. Yes. Uh, since we're going to talk about Teaching in a second, I want to get us kind of in the subtle energy feeling mode, right? So we're going to do a very, anyone can do this easily at home, unless maybe you're driving, <laughs> but it's a type of subtle energy exercise. It's very basic type of Qigong practice that a lot of listeners might already be familiar with. You might, what we're going to do is just hold our hands roughly I don't know, six inches apart from each other, palms facing each other. Oh, I have done that. As you're holding them there, just kind of feel if there's any kind of magnetic feeling between them, almost like that 
an energy ball. You can ima- use your imagination to feel this if you're not feeling it right now, because your imagination can become the scaffolding that your body uses to communicate the feeling of energy with you if you've atrophied that sense from not using it. So imagination doesn't have to mean you're not feeling it. Just use your imagination to help you tap into feeling it. That's kind of but probably this crowd, they're probably like, I feel it. I've got a yeah. meha right here, <laughs> ready to take out whoever. So what we'll do is uh, we'll breathe in to the, and we'll try to breathe our prana, our energy into this ball in front of us. And as you exhale, push your hands out during the exhale. And just let them stop and rest at the point where you quit exhaling. Try to sync up the exhale with the the pushing out and stopping at the end of the exhale. Then on the next inhale, bring them back into about where they were. And just for a few breaths, three, four, five, or longer if you want to, just push with the exhale, push the hands apart and bring them together on the inhale. And try to even if you can feel as if you're not controlling your hands or telling your hands to move in and out with your breath, but let that energy ball between your hands actually from its expanding, push your hands in and out and let the breath be the only thing that you're actually trying to do. The only thing you're controlling, the only thing you're, yeah, the only real switch point that you have access to is your breath. And this energy ball is expanding and contracting with it. This is a really great exercise to just tap you back into your internal field at any time, uh, can calm you down, feels good. It's like just as good as taking a few deep gulps of breath, but plus you're getting your chi activated in these powerful chakras of the palm of your hand, which is a microcosm fractal of the rest of your body. So even though you're not doing anything whole body, just working with the chi and your hands in this way, can stimulate your entire subtle energy field. It's really awesome. If you practice this a lot, this is something I've done with friends who also do subtle energy work in Qigong, is you can have somebody, you can hold your hands like you were, and then have your friend put their hands outside of your hands, just a few inches outside. And then what the friend will do is they'll do the exercise of pulling the hands out and pushing them back in, And your hands will stay in the middle and you're going to try to sync up your breathing with your friend. And you're going to see if your hands inside of theirs go in and out with the expansion of the, what they're doing. Basically you're letting them push the chi around for you. And it's very possible. And it'll kind of trip you out because you're like, I'm not moving my hands right now. I'm not doing anything but breathing, but my hands are moving themselves. And uh, it's a cool way you can sync up your, your sort of fields synchronized with a friend and practice this cool, subtle energy technique. I was taught- And as Gordon says in the chat, that's actually how Qigong style energy healing works is to try to create that circuit uh, with another being Uh and help them receive prana into whatever part of the body. Cause that's what I, I was taught is you create it and then you give it either to yourself or like something else intentionally, like throw it at someone or like throw it at yourself. And I don't know if that's actually what you're supposed to do, but- the only other time I've ever done that exact same thing, that's what I was told to do. Yeah, and my advice about that uh, would be don't visualize like you're giving them your energy. Now, if you want to build up a big charge like in your hands with something like what we just did, think of it like it's not like you're funneling your energy into it. It's just that you're collecting universal Universal. energy and then Ah. that's the gift. But at any point, you want to be clear with yourself that you're not in any way using your reserves for the practice. They don't need your energy. You're helping the circuitry of their field receive energy that's all around us, the free zero-point field energy, right? Yeah, that is perfect. I, <laughs> I'm a weirdo when I... I'm like doing the opposite is when I feel the energy more. So like if I'm pushing in while I'm breathing out maybe or whatever whatever you the opposite of what you said was that's, that's when actually I can, like, totally fine oh good because i was like this is the only yeah, way i can, can do it really the other way feel it. okay awesome yeah that's actually cool in fact so this this uh, phrase i heard when i talked to tom barnett great dude on my show 
but he calls it working in. And basically he, I think he got this from other teachers maybe, but like, why, I guess that doesn't matter. Right. We've nothing new under the sun, but the idea is that any motion that you do, that's a repetitive motion that you synchronize with your inhale and exhale, where the motion begins at, with the inhale and ends with the end of the inhale and then reverses back to its original position with the exhale and just going back. You could like raise your arms as you inhale and then lower them. Yeah. Literally anything like that is working in as in stimulating the subtle internal energy field of your body in a very positive and helpful way, which is going to energize the blueprint inside yourself that the whole system uses to heal, to build new, new, new cells, all of that. So um, it's actually more beneficial to work in even gently half of, half of your time of exercising. Like if you want to go to the gym every day and like really crush it and burn yourself out, I'm not saying that some people aren't equipped to do that. You can build yourself up to that point, but by balancing out, working out and working in, and I found this to be true, you'll actually make as probably, probably more progress with the heavy lifting, so to speak, or the uh, difficult workout activity without getting run ragged. Hmm. Uh, it's a great way to help yourself get into a rejuvenative flow. And you can do it a few times a day, just take like two minutes, or you can do a longer practice. And I mean, I need to take my own advice. I'm not perfect with yeah. it myself, <laughs> but I know it works because I've been doing it for years. He, it, at least in times of most dire need, if not pretty regularly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's like, we talk about a lot of times the best reason to do things regularly and have practices is so that when you hit those moments of like dire times and crisis, you're already like going first there instead of out, you know, into chaos or whatever, <laughs> you know, cause you've got that foundation. So I think it's really, I don't know. There's a lot of people don't like ritual or repetition or whatever. And I understand that too. Like you got to change it up every once in a while. So you're not just mindlessly doing things, but I just think it's good to have this like practice and this foundation for that, for that purpose. But yeah, should we get into the I Ching? You want to address this uh, quick chat question? Sure. What is it's from Lindsay. Ah, are you pulling positive energy from the universe and pushing it into someone who is too negatively charged to ground them out, balance them? Love the battery analogy. Yeah, what do you think? So I'll take that one. I mean, don't take me as an expert either. I have no certifications. I'm not attuned by any masters. I'm <laughs> level zero, I guess. <laughs> uh. This is all my personal experience, my own work with people. This all came this all came to me as if I was remembering things one step at a time all throughout the process. I don't know how else to describe it, but that's the best way. I would say Instead, uh, kind of think of it like you're you're connecting a circuitry. So it's not even very much that you have to visualize pulling positive energy from the universe or pushing it into them. It's it can be as simple as the fact that you know that you are grounded. You're focusing on being grounded, and your physical touch to another being grounds them. Hmm. You might notice this that when you hug certain people that you haven't seen for a while, maybe they're in a bad mood. Maybe you shock them, hmm. or they shock you that's you grounding them that's awesome. and it's a real thing. So it can be a very simple concept in your mind that to ground them, maybe you would physically touch them and you would be practicing your own grounding, uh, connecting from like the bottom of your spine into the core of the earth with a visualization and trying to feel that flow uh, stimulated in that lower chakra region. And then if you wanna get into the universal energy then possibly let yourself open up to feel some flow of energy through the crown. Imagine and visualize that. And then for, you know, connecting the circuitry to them, you don't actually have to physically touch them to give them energy from universal source, so to speak. But uh, I, I think it can be really simple. And I think anybody can come up with their own terminology and way that they're doing it. And the only thing that I highly recommend is that you do have a grounding and energy hygiene practice if you do this kind of stuff with others for yourself the only thing you need to do is the energy hygiene and grounding practice practically yeah. although you can give yourself the like you could build up that charge in your hands and then just be like ah oh, just give it to your heart or something it yeah. can feel amazing you or can definitely give that to yourself but 
yeah, uh, come play, play with this and just have the practices of even protection practices. I don't think you need to get too heavy duty into being worried. Like, am I protected enough? It's mostly like, know that no. you are by knowing that knowing how, knowing what you're doing and what you're doing is being a template for them to see wholeness for their cells to feel wholeness. That's what the sound healing does. Their cells are hearing a coherent tone and then they're auto tuning themselves to that tone. You're like an instrument tuner in a way. All you're doing is providing the template of coherence to them, whether that's through the action of holding your hand out and, and feeling that magnetic uh, sort of charge between you and them a few inches away or touching them and grounding them. There's a lot of ways you could do it, but yeah, it's, it's mostly about your own groundedness. And that would be my favorite. <laughs> Someone said their fiance and them shock each other often. Yeah. You're grounding each other. It's good. It's very good. Um, I really love the principles, right? You're a channel, not, you're not holding on to any of this energy. You're not taking energy from other people. You're not giving your energy to other people. You're more like this channel or this connector or whatever. Um, and that idea too, like your protection is in your, your knowing that you are protected and that you're more powerful than anything negative intent of negative intent could, could be in your free will in your space. It's yours. And also, um, that's why I like having spiritual allies too. Cause if you know for sure they're powerful enough that like, now, you know, for sure you are too, like they're on your side. So like whatever you need to work and a lot of ritual and stuff that we do is just about like recreating that knowing you're like, okay, I did this. So now I know, and I did this. And so now I know like these things are happening this is how it is. Like you're just reinforcing that. But, but yeah, um, super cool practice. I love that. This is, that's usually like the middle path thing now is that we do practices over there, but I like bringing it over to rogue ways too. So everybody knows that that's what middle path is every single week is stuff like that. So come over there if you haven't gone yet. Um, and yeah, do you, Nat, do you want to jump into the I Ching? Sure. I mean, I have just a couple of slides that we can show too, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Made them on my phone while I was at the gym. <laughs> and they're beautiful. <laughs> so, sometimes you can multitask. Yeah. yeah. This isn't going to be like a huge I Ching. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, lecture, right? I don't consider myself a master, but I do have a lot of experience working with it. It's helped me in my own intuitive abilities. So let's, uh, yeah, someone just said, makes you think about the intent of social distancing. Yeah, six feet is about the common uh, edge of people's biofield. So there's definitely something to that. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> Absolutely. All yeah. that information we can share with each other without even speaking, cut off. Not to mention all the information transmitted from face to face. What's funny though, I know it's more accessible, right? When you're that close and, and whatever and, and in the biofield, but I also know that there's no time or space that can restrict me from sending whatever information I want to anywhere or receiving it from anywhere. So, you know, this is why we can do distance tarot readings and like distance biofield tuning and all of these things is because we know that. But I think it's just like knowing you're protected, like you can't do it if you don't know that you can do it. <laughs> Right. Or you can, yeah. it's just a lot yeah. harder. Um, so they think, I think, I think they think they're being really effective at, at like shutting down the, the web of light that is spreading everywhere all the time, but they're not. No, in my humble opinion. Stronger. Yeah, exactly. They're yeah, teaching us how to do it in other ways. They push the envelope so far that as soon as somebody cracks and they're not on board anymore and they're fed up they're nobody's going back to, like sheeple status once they fully get it. Now there could be some flip-flopping early in their, their path, no doubt, and lots of denial at the beginning of the journey because it's funny how awakening mirrors the stages of grief big time. True, <laughs> yeah, you're like, totally go through each stage, fight it like it's your worst enemy, <laughs> pretend it's not real, yes. Um, well, and I love, I love I Ching for that same reason, you know, I think like a lot of these tools, like you can, and, and you're about, we're about to show people that you can do it at a distance, uh, as well. You know, there's no restriction. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Yeah, we'll just go over a little bit of what the I Ching is. And uh, then we'll kind of just get into playing with it. Because as a field of study, I want people if they're interested to just study it themselves, I don't want to try to be too concrete about 
what I say it is. Although there are very many interesting things I've, I've observed about the structure of it that we can get into a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting some of the philosophy is awesome. But by the end of this, you'll know how to cast I Ching for yourself, even if you don't have anything but a few coins. So and you would also maybe want the internet or a chart of what the hexagrams mean. But I like this um, to show it to people, although I have a sticker covering the top. This is a, it's called the Tao Oracle. So T-A-O Oracle, Ma Deva Padma, Chi or he, I really don't know, was a disciple of that uh, colorful character Osho. Ah. And I know people have mixed feelings about that, <laughs> but lots of really great people were in cults at first. So it's not like this is a bad book. Yeah. Uh, it's actually what's in it is a great guide to each of the 64 eaching uh, positions and also a beautiful deck of cards. So you can treat it like an Oracle. And although I don't usually do Oracle style where you just draw a random card with people, I like to do the coins because it kind of going back to that knowing thing, whenever you're like, you have all these cards to choose from and it's all fanned out in front of you. You're like, which one's the right one? Hmm. Of course, I know that I can't pick the wrong one. Right. But uh, someone new to it, they possibly feel a little more confident that they did the right thing when all they had to do was throw coins. It's kind of like throwing the dice. How can you mess that up? There's only one way to do it. So um, whenever we get a certain hexagram, I'll pull it out of this deck. Hopefully, I should have put them in order before this. That would have been smart. But we'll, we'll show off a few of the beautiful art images in this oracle too. This was my first introduction to oracles at all. And so that is how I used it at first. But what I like uh, about the I Ching is it's as deep as the Western tarot. It, I mean, it's kind of one of those things that both are so deep. How could you say what's more deep? Yeah. It's in the league of Western tarot, at least as ancient, if not more ancient, we can, at least if the historical records to be believes we can trace the I Ching back further than the tarot by quite a few millennia. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, that's just like, who knows? Right. <laughs> but it's old as hell. Uh, what's good about it, though, is that it feels more accessible than getting into tarot for the first time. Yeah. And that's because true. it's a, the symbolism is a little more universal and simple and philosophical, if you will. So like I said, there's a lot of depth to it, but you don't have to try to figure out like, well, what does the fool's pack mean? And why is he standing on a cliff's edge and like all of that stuff? I mean, you can get that out of the artwork for these cards, but then at that point, it's really the Oracle deck you're working with and not the I Ching because the I Ching is this purely conceptual thing, which is another caveat to point out about it. Like any other man-made conceptual system, it is conceptual. That means it's imaginary. That means you must treat it as such. That means that if you get an oracle and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to die. No, <laughs> no, you're not. Like there, there aren't really bad cards in the I Ching anyway, but with anything conceptual, like if you went and got your tarot cards read by someone and they're like, your, your mom's going to die and you're going to die. And it was all this, like, don't that can, the only way that can actually harm you is if you believe that and start acting out of fear, which yeah. I've never seen happen to people that were, able to be put into fear state like that. And then it gives the, the reader who's kind of a, an energy vampire at that point, this sort of perverse like power over them. Like I know your future and you better trust me because I, I see your death and all that. So it's we're so... definitely not gonna use it as that type of divination. It's more, it's more of an internal journey reflecting your current state and consciousness. I like to call the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching they're called hexagrams, not because they're hexes, but because they're composed of six lines, okay? <laughs> Got to reclaim words. But yeah, uh, I look at each of the 64 as a particular configuration of consciousness in the universe that consciousness can take. Hmm. And uh, those configurations can all flow into and out of each other. So you have uh, a huge variety of complexity. You can think of this, I mean, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Let's bring up the first slide. I'm starting to just go. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I just want to show so we can see what a hexagram is. And I do have the stream pause. So has it already been up? I guess I Wait, should what? I screen share? Yeah, go ahead. No, it hasn't been up. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I 
was waiting on myself the whole time. Do <laughs> I have permission to do that? <laughs> I think I, I did. Have to... Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, good. Okay, tight. Okay. Let's see here. Now, I apologize for not being like in a PowerPoint, so there's going to be the windows. Yeah. <laughs> I make them make it big, okay? That's going to be fine. I'll full screen them. That's so this beautiful. is an ancient symbol called the Bagua. And each of these positions around it, around the yin yang, represent one of these what are called trigrams. And each one of the trigrams have a particular type of element, but that element is in the Eastern system. So it's not the same as like the, uh, you know, the four elements and the quintessence of the pentacle in Western occultism. There are different ways that the uh, fire and the, you know, earth kind of work in the system, in this system, but also if you, do come from a background of Western occultism and the elements that are represented in the I Ching give you a certain feel that can connect to your intuition more in a Western way, you can still use the I Ching that way because the only thing that you're really connecting to is your intuition. And there's therefore, there's really no wrong answers. It's going to be, you pose a question, you see something in the universe that is, you are accepting to be in some way a sign or indication of that question and and your internal knowing of the answer. The thing is not, it's called sometimes the book of changes. I think I've heard it called the book of answers as well, but it's really you that are, the, you're the answers and the book is showing you the changes. And then you're the one who's gonna answer what, what those changes mean, what they're gonna look like, where they already happened, that type of stuff. So it's really an oracle of diving into yourself. It's an interactive I also want to point out that, experience. Yeah, Go ahead real quick. Oh, I was just saying it's real an, quick. Sorry. <laughs> it's an interactive experience. I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's the same with any good like Oracle system is that it's asking you to look deeply within yourself to to like reflect on that, you know, and providing that opportunity for you to do so. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why even though it's conceptual and it's not real because it's all made up by people's imagination to begin with, it still has like the positive use of imagination is that exact thing to look within. And I consider imagination to be the primary mode of perception that all other modes of perception are actually offshoots of. I like to say it all the time. Imagining is not a way of thinking. Thinking is a way of imagining. Ha, huh. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so it's primacy. <laughs> I like that too. Yeah. The Bagua here though, if anyone uh, wants a lucky symbol, they consider it in the East to be really like good fortune to wear one of these on your body. I used to have a really cool one made of jade. It was like, like hand carved and the yin yang in the middle was loose and you could spin it around. But then cool. I gave it to some, uh, some guy at a music festival. That's that like I a trend of yours I... <laughs> I like to give things away at music festivals. <laughs> yeah. Crystals and stones. Hmm. It's a thing. I actually do have a cool new bag of pendant that's made of obsidian, but it makes a nice fashion statement. People can be like, what's that? And you can be like, it represents the eight elements that are part of the I Ching. And then they're like, what's the I Ching? And they're like, it's this cool thing. You want to do it with me? I have some coins right yeah. here. And the next thing you know, you're reading people's fortune. That's so cool. <laughs> well, and I noticed this um, yin yang is sideways to me, at least, because we most often, I think, see it the other direction. And so I really like this because this is the wave form as I imagine it more often. So I don't know if that's intentional or random or, you know, the, the true way or, or if it's just one of many ways. I couldn't say what the proper way a yin yang should look is. And in the I Ching, the I Ching, it would suggest that there isn't a proper one anyway, because yin and yang as primary forces are actually two of these elements, the solid lines, three solid lines, on the bottom right hand corner, mm -hmm. I guess that would be like the uh, southeast corner. That is yang, three unbroken lines. And then the three broken lines in the northeast corner is yin, mm -hmm. pure yin. So there's a, a one of the 64 hexagrams is yin over yang, and one of the other ones is yang over yin. Huh. So uh, both are kind of valid, right? Yeah. But we'll see as we use the I Ching, we'll see that there is a big difference between what happens when the yang becomes the dominant over the uh, yin and when the yin becomes the dominant over the yang. It's a crazy dance that these forces are constantly in, oscillating 
between where even the yin becomes yang in a way and the yang becomes yin as they take they switch positions on who is the active and who is the passive it's very fascinating stuff super cool very scientific yes well it's very true that there is nothing that is just pure it's always got at least like a tiny speck of its opposite within it okay let me see what my next one was going to be this one here we go okay so this chart shows you what each of the trigrams are and whenever we cast the I Ching or we draw a card each card or of the 64 is two of these trigrams put together to make a hexagram see what it, they did there try hex three six <laughs> and kind of is funny because it does tie into the three six nine conversation from earlier yeah in a big way because this is a square of nine <laughs> right so here as well and I Ching. <laughs> I guess i guess they tie together Dude, now i know terence mckenna tied together all of it tarot I Ching, hexagram like uh, solfeggio everything in um the invisible landscape if people haven't read that book they should read it if you want to read a poetic premise or uh, precise of that book you can go to rogueways.org and search for the shaman's door and i've summarized Sweet. it for you but it's pretty rad <laughs> Yeah, I never, I listened to Terrence lectures all the time, but I never did get into his books, but Invisible I, I listened to so many of his lectures one. that I feel like I could call him on the phone in my mind and just be yes. like, Terrence, what would you say about this? And he would say, "Actually, well, you have to consider it from the perspective of the elf machines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But yeah, we, we don't have to necessarily go through these in uh, deep detail. We'll just touch on all of them. You've got wood which and, and where it says what it's supported for that's also something that although there's a traditional way to use the I Ching if you have a more western or just personal idea about wood and that's what comes to mind more than the idea of wealth or finances that's okay like we said your intuition is the guide when you're using these things but if it helps you to have a more structured approach to looking at it you can take these these uh significances as a little bit more solid and you may find yourself shifting between. It might depend on read to read. It might depend on if you're reading for someone what they might comprehend and you could kind of simplify it in some ways. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a very much you're the thing that is uh, speaking and the I Ching is just like an instrument. Uh, then you have fire, earth, and then, I'm sorry, I, I said wood, but uh, what I meant was wind but it's in the wood family. There's oh. kind of like this subcategory thing. So wind, fire, earth, thunder, lake, mountain, water, and heaven. And we might talk about each of those a little more specifically if they come up for us, but like lake, another word for it could be abyss, which is like the deep, deep water. Mm. And then water is more like the flowing, life-giving regular water that you drink yeah. and it might be in a, a river or a pond but lake is like the depths you know it's sort of a piscean thing it's so interesting because today i uh did some work with a, a client and a lake was part of um the vision that came up from and i could just tell that it was actually more like this deep subconscious more like the idea of the abyss than like you know because in my head i'm like oh a lake like let's go swimming this is like the best day it's like sunny and splashy and fun but this was no this was like <laughs> abyssal um but it's interesting because i didn't really know that that was a concept uh until you just said it but you know i could feel it it's kind of a scary one like yeah. if you get lake lake I believe that that one is like the abyssal <laughs> the is like the name of the card. <laughs> wow. And, but those are also that, that type of card has a, a deep tra transformative power, that type of uh, experience. The It's almost like we have, we've probably all had something in our lives where we hit the bottom and came out at the top, like yeah. we crashed through the bottom. And then all of a sudden what we were so scared of once we went through that, all, it's like, we just, jump back up to the top of the sine wave. And then there's that sine wave you're talking about. Yeah. And, and uh, like... as much as we might try to smooth out the sine wave and it is possible to a large degree to not be as rocked by the, the waves on that lake, there's always going to be that pattern in our life. And it's, it's okay to embrace it. Um, 
it's just better to know that it's a pattern than to be blindsided by the fact that I was so happy and now I'm so sad. Right. <laughs> you can't have one without the other. So it's all good. That's awesome. But let me go ahead. I'll jump through the last couple. These probably we won't linger on very long and we'll just jump straight into doing the thing. Cool. Okay. You know what? Let's let's not. I'm gonna end the screen share. Oh, cool. Yeah. If okay. I bring those up later, they're fine. There's a couple other correlations that um okay. Change my mind again. Indian, Indian <laughs> giver. That's not PC. Yeah. It's okay. what we say though. So this, is, <laughs> this one's cool too, this chart, because it shows how four of oh, the wow. trigrams are in the yin category and four are more in the yang category. And it shows the way that you would speak about a hexagram in the bottom left. The bottom is the initial and the top is the top. And so you'd go uh, from the bottom, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. And someone might accidentally try to read it from the top one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. And that has significance when you might be reading out of a book. Because one of the cool things about when you use the coins to cast the I Ching is you'll get potentially almost always changing lines. Mm. So you'll throw the coin six times and that will give you your six lines. But depending on how the coins fall, some of those lines might be shifting so that you not only get the hexagram represented by the coin toss, but also a new hexagram that is where your consciousness shift is going towards. And based on which lines had to change to get you to that next hexagram, that has a lot of significance, which was it the, you know, was it the foundation that was pulled out the you know, did you break the line on the bottom and make it a broken line? Oh. Or was it something at the top at the higher heavenly realms in the in the, you know, that was changed. So that also is a, a really cool aspect of the I Ching that there's a lot of combinations, any of those 64 cards could shift into any of the other 64 yeah. cards if the right changing lines occurred. So there's, that means that when you get synchronicities like happen to me all the time where I, I do a read with a group of five people, and the beginning card ends up matching what the last card changed into. <laughs> the <a> odds <laughs> of that are actually <laughs> <Really> st staggering, <laughs> astronomical. So like, you, and just like when you know we did like group a lot of group work at the um, one day of brightness event, like we saw a lot of these sort of synchronicities and chains that would like flow through all of us, you know, and kind of make this cycle. And it's I imagine it's similar. Like you're. There's a reason you all came together to do these I Ching readings. There's a reason we all came together to do the one day of brightness. And it's because we have some sort of like common thread that we're all like as a group alchemically transforming, whether we know it or not, um, which is pretty cool. But I'm glad you explained that because I didn't understand that. And I have this I Ching book, which um, I've been reading through and trying to like learn and done a few myself. And I understood that there was some lines that were that you know what you're saying like the changing line or whatever but i didn't know what to do with that so now i get it so thank you for that understanding yeah and uh, after this first demo with the coins everybody will have actually before we start i should have gave everyone the heads up but if you want to go do this along with us you can right now but you would need to maybe look up online uh, a chart of all the hexagrams if you will and that would help you match which one you got. It's like uh, so lower to upper and you can like find where they meet and then look that one up. Yeah. And yeah. I'll show you like the, you could find online a chart that looked like this on the back of my book here where oh, cool. it's got all of the eight on top and then all the eight on the left. And it shows you what each number would be if they converge. So that could, if you found a chart like that, uh, you could do this along with us and know what number you got. And then you could also probably easily Google like I Ching 42. What does that mean? So now or later, if you've got three coins and want to do this sometime, you can experiment and it's pretty cool. Um, but it is great as a beginner to have a book like this that came with the deck because I've spent enough time with it. Initially, all I would do is just read out of the book and then read what the changing lines meant. And then we talk about what that made us feel like on top of it. And honestly, guys, if if you're new to divination, that is enough. Mm -hmm. That is more than enough. It's not enough to just read the book and have no thoughts of your own, <laughs> but the book will prime you. And later, once you start to get a feel for it, you probably can put the book away or just kind of glance at it and be like, oh yeah, it has to do with this. And then your brain will just start going and kicking off. And then eventually after, you know, some, some real time with it, 
you'll just look at what the elements are and how which one's dominant and which one's passive and the name of the card or the name of the hexagram and you'll be like ah of course <laughs> and it'll like click you'll get, it'll get there but it doesn't have to be you don't have to be at that proficiency level to get deep deep self gnosis out of uh, a system like this and i think maybe even more accessible in my opinion than tarot for that very reason because there's not a lot of ambiguity here about there's some different interpretations of maybe one hexagram but you're the you're going to be able to be pretty clear about what it means for you if you reflected and maybe before you cast your coins you just asked yourself the question or you told yourself you're open to seeing yourself and where you're at right now as clearly as possible it doesn't have to be a specific question i wouldn't use it for like yes or no life decisions i would use it to be like i think this is how i feel or i'm not sure how i feel but i want it to be reflected to me through uh, me asking the external universe and knowing that there's no mistakes in nature or in reality hmm. reality is reality so whatever i threw on these coins that's reality and, it's, and then you figure out what it means from there and just trust it. I love it. I totally agree. And I do, I think, you know, tarot is, is absolutely similar, but a lot, there's a lot more wiggle room, like you said. And, and for that reason, I Ching is like more like surgical, <laughs> you know, especially yeah, if you're- Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're both incredible. I mean, I don't discourage anyone from either thing. And I'm not even saying you can't be a new to tarot and have great deep intuition out of it, but- for me, this is uh, very accessible to people that aren't even super woo-woo. <laughs> like some people see a deck of tarot cards and they're like, didn't Satan make those? Yeah. <laughs> and you'll be like, no, no, no. <laughs> Actually, no, it's hermetic. But <laughs> anyway. The Satan. Okay, so uh, you know what? Let's, uh, here was our plan, Lindsay. If I'm wrong about this, correct me. But we wanted to do a sort of circle type of uh, situation where maybe I'll kick us off. And I'll do my own coin throw. And then if somebody volunteers in chat or multiple somebodies, we can pull them into a Zoom, the Zoom with us. Yeah. And I'll uh, throw their coins. Or they, if they've got their coin, what would be better is if they found three quarters or three pennies and they throw their own coins and tell me what it, what they got. Because yeah. then they're using their own energy to, to do it. So, so that would be ideal. But I can throw the coins for you if you don't have coins on hand. So we can get a couple of call-ins, just one at a time, and we'll see where the I Ching progression takes us from one person to another. Because when I do these with groups of people, there's always a cool story that is very evident from uh, cast to cast, if you will. That's cool. So if any volunteers want to uh, throw their hands up in the Jump chat, on. we'll go with that. <laughs> if we don't get any volunteers, we'll work with that as well. And don't be totally shy. Okay. People are like, oh, everyone's going to see this. And it's like, no, the people who are here are going to see it. A few other people you'll never know anyway, and who cares? And then the most of the rest of the people are going to listen. So they won't even, <laughs> you don't have to feel bad at all. But yeah, if you if people really want to do it and uh, don't want to jump in, maybe we could do a call too. But you can oh, also jump it. in and not... Three. Oh, cool. And you can also jump in and not show your face. Like you can just do audio, so... If that's holding anyone back, don't worry. Oh, cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so. Okay, so we've got a few takers for sure. Giselia actually had three quarters right next to him. Nice. Right, right there. Gisela is on a roll too. She's, that, that's cool. So I can throw the link in and then we'll just tell who to jump on first and then um, make sure your name, it like asks you what your name is or whatever, just put in your name as it is in the chat so we know who's coming in so I can know who to admit in case random people try to come in. You know what I mean? Yeah, honor system, guys. Yeah. So here's the link. <laughs> but first, Chance is going to start. Yeah, I'm looking for my coins because I had them. There they are. Did you need the passcode when you came in? Nope. Okay. Just let me write in. All right. So I found, I have a bunch of these, but they're old Chinese, who knows what, That's a cool. time period Chinese coins and uh, dropped one. But they're very cheap at this metaphysical bookstore that is in my town. And I have a bunch of them in case I ever lose them. I love them. So it's very simple. Whatever coins you're using, 
you need to have a clearly defined heads and tails. So if they're not American coins with an actual heads and a tails, you would use like for, for my coins here, one side has two symbols and the other side has four symbols. So the two sided symbols are tails for me and the four sided is heads basically. So you'll throw all three and you'll look and if you have more heads, then it's an unbroken line, which is Yang, unbroken, masculine, linear. If you have more tails, then it is a broken line. And the uh, caveat is if you get all three heads or all three tails, then that position is a changing line. So all three heads would start out as a straight, an unbroken line and then change into a broken line. All three tails would start out as a broken line and change into an unbroken line. So you do this three times and you find out how many broken lines and unbroken lines you've got starting from the bottom. bottom up. And you, you make a little dot maybe on your piece of paper next to, I need a piece of paper. So you do all three <laughs> coins all at once um, six times and you write exactly. down what you got, like heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, heads, And you heads. don't have to even write heads, 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 or tails, tails, tails. You just draw the line or the broken line. But I would And if you got- If I were- And if you got trip- People, I wouldn't remember sorry, which but, was which. Well, sure. Uh, <laughs> the key is to remember that he, um, you can decide which, if heads is the broken line or tails is the broken line. That's up to you. Oh, okay. You just need to be consistent. Okay. However you want to do it. The, the key is that one is- one side of the coin is yang and one side is yin. And if you get more yin, you get an, a broken line. If you get more yang, you get an unbroken line. I think this makes sense. And I will, I will demonstrate as I, as, as go. I go. Okay. I won't hold the coins up to show how they landed, but to trust me on that. <laughs> well, believe um, me. <laughs> we trust and you. And I have a pen. There was a pen right here. I'm good. <laughs> it's magic. Okay, so I'm throwing my first coins and I wound up with two heads and a tails, which means my bottom line, because you start from the bottom, is an unbroken line. Unbroken with and two I heads. Pick them up and do it again. <clears throat> and yes, Snake Jones, I think you heard me that you can decide which is heads, which heads means what's. <laughs> <laughs> so my next throw was two tails and one heads which for me tails is yin so i'm just going to say two yin one yang which is that that means it's a broken line for the next line starting from the bottom making each line stack up onto the next next one yeah that's a good idea write it in chat <laughs> okay my third toss try to be quick about this i got three yang which is heads for me which means i got an unbroken line that's changing so i put a little dot next to it to indicate it's changing. And uh, then another two yang, one yin. So another unbroken line and another broken line, two yin, one yang. Okay. Ain't that a trip? That was a cool one. Okay. <laughs> what was the last one? The last one was another unbroken line. So for me, it was un it was unbroken, broken, unbroken, changing, unbroken, broken, unbroken. So it's <laughs> like, basically to go back to, I'll go back to the chart here real quick. Maybe, yeah. Okay, so. Both my upper and lower trigrams are fire, which makes sense because I'm a fire sign. It was just my birthday. We're in Aries. I'm even a Leo rising. So I've got a lot of fire. Huh. So I have fire and fire, which is a sweet combination in my opinion. That's card number 30. Leave. And because I have a broken line uh, on the third position, which is from the bottom going up, that means the bottom trigram is changing into thunder, which is also sweet. I love that element. So to uh, put it simply, what I've got is uh, uh, fire over fire and then fire over thunder. So fire over thunder is 21. And I will show the imagery of the those cards and describe them once I Lindsay, I'll let you talk about this while I pull them out of my deck because that'll take me just a second. 
what am I talking about? Oh, whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just imagining a fire like a, you know, like a forest fire and like how the lightning always is striking it. And so it's interesting that those two would come together um, in this thing that you're uh, that you have in your two hexagrams. And then I also was thinking about how I wondered if you even had time to formulate like what you were doing this about or if you just jumped into it. <laughs> Because you just seem to go. Um, oh, yeah. For me, um, I sometimes don't even think about it because it's going to tell me in a second anyway. <laughs> so as someone got lost on the changing, and I do think that's like the most confusing part. So it's it's when you get all yin or all yang that it's a changing, right? Right. So all three you're looking the for the majority, like if you have more heads or more tails, but if you get all three of the same thing, then it changes. It's still so a broken it starts or off unbroken. as what it was dominant in, and then it reverses, and then that gives you your. So after you make your 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 uh, hexagram where you've got all six lines broken and unbroken, wherever there was one that's a changing line because you had trips, you would put a dot by that, and then you'd redraw your hexagram to the right of the first one. But any lines that had a dot by them, you would change it, so invert it. So, so basically, you- for mine, it was unbroken, broken unbroken at the bottom, but the top one was changing. So that trigram became unbroke, came uh, unbroken, broken, broken. So you can see sense. it if you're looking at fire to thunder here on the diagram that that exactly. top line of fire is is unbroken, but because it was a changing line, he's also going to look at thunder because that one has the, the broken at the top. So if, you know, if your heads was your yang, which is your unbroken line, and you got all three heads, it'd still be an unbroken line, but you put a dot next to it, or some people like circle it to remind themselves that that one changes. And then they you also look at the trigram where that's the opposite type of line. Hopefully that yeah, helped exactly and didn't just how, confuse how even more. But also if you're going to jump on the call and you're confused about which lines were which, you can also like review what coins you got or what lines you got or something and, and Chance can confirm for you. Um, oh, good. Yeah, we'll walk you through it. I'm glad that so we I pulled... <laughs> clarified that because Snake got lake over lake and he was like, I'm doomed. But then he realized he made a mistake. So that's perfect. He didn't get lake over lake. <laughs> no, Snake, he's in the abyss. Yeah, he has been having a rough, a rough little time. But all right. That's so you... cool. I'm glad people are following along with that. Yeah. It's really fun. It's super cool. Okay, so we got the first one is 30, fire over fire. Oh, let's go back to big screen so we can... Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, you're I've good. been on this too long. Yeah. Forgot I'm in charge of that. Okay. <laughs> Co-pilot. This is what the card looks like. Cool. That's the fire over fire. Yes. Yeah. So we know fire is a passionate thing and it's a spiritual thing. So when you have fire and fire together, obviously it's bright, it's hot, it's warm. It's literally pure inspiration. It is the thing that makes you go out on the dance floor because you're just feeling it so much that you just start moving your body and you don't even care if anyone sees or you don't even remember where you're at. It's literally you. That moment where you and the music are all that exists and your body is moving with it because it is it, that's the clinging. Mm. It's also the like that all-consuming passion and love that you could feel for somebody else, uh, that sort of like love at first sight could be an aspect of that the way that when like twin flames meet each other think about that phrase twin flames yeah. twin flames <laughs> this is fire over fire it's the same concept so it is like a twin flame type of uh concept in that sense it is uh, a regenerative process you would think that fire and fire would be like whoa that's destructive it's going to burn everything down but on a in a spiritual level bringing that much illumination within is purely regenerative. It it does burn out impurities. Uh, it does have that destructive quality of enlightenment. That as, aspect of the fire never went away, but this is like more of an enlightenment type of uh, concept, the clinging. And it's not that you're enlightened, it's that you're experiencing enlightenment. Yeah. And that's important for everyone on the path to be like, you're not going to get enlightened enlightened it's not an and there's not an over, end you point. Win. yeah <laughs> yeah it is moments of enlightenment and the next time you experience enlightenment it's actually going to be different it's going to be bigger it's going to be more light more aperture if you will so 
this is actually one of my favorite cards. I'll show the image on it again one more time. It's number 30. And the artwork in this deck, as you can see, it's super cool. Yeah, so beautiful. It is. It's these uh, dancing like goddesses. And one of them is literally her crown is on fire. Yeah. So I love that one. And my changing line. Now I'm going to refer to the book on the changing line here, just out of curiosity, because I'm not as familiar with specifically what they, those all mean. That's why I don't want to be called an I Ching master <laughs> because uh, I'm, still learning this. And if I wanted to be a master, I would spend a lot more time just on this and like studying and studying. And at some point I'll continue my studies at different points sporadically, but the line that's changing is the third line from the bottom, which from the book, it says, and this is for everybody. Now, this is all of our Oracle right now. Honoring the path of truth may sound like an impossible ideal as distant as the far horizon. But in real time, it is only as far as the next step, opening to the guidance that emanates from how you are feeling in the here and now is all you need to do right now. When you adhere to the inner guidance of the heart, you can easily learn from mistakes and you are less likely to be thrown off balance by external influences. If I had to so, encapsulate the whole purpose of Rogue Ways in like a one little bit, like it would be what you just read. <laughs> you know, like, you know, listen, listen to within everybody has that guide, everybody has that voice. It's not some far off, like, thing that you have to search for and climb the mountain to get to like, it's right here all the time. And what's really going to blow your mind is what it means for that change to occur when you're in the state of the clinging for just that one change to open up that, that bottom fire furnace and let that broken line bring the energy of the fire below convert it into electric lightning <laughs> and send it up to support the, the fire of the above. Ooh. You get the most amazing thing. It's, it's a hexagram 21 fire over thunder or fire over lightning. You could say it's kind of thunder because it has a lot to do with the sound hmm. and the fury as much as it has to do with the flash of light. But card, uh, card 21 is biting through. So in that moment of, honoring the path of truth where it's only as far away as the next step. As soon as you realize that you're biting through True. every step, you're <laughs> taking a bite, you're eating the elephant as the, the band of perfect circle puts it in one of their recent albums, which was really good. <laughs> Look up that song, eat the elephant. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the image on this card because it's so badass, It's ridiculous. <gasps> it's the dragon. Oh, yeah. That's wow. like the dragon ball Z dragon that grants you the wishes when you get all the dragon balls. You've, you're biting through dude the, someone was saying earlier i think it was Lindsay in the chat was saying like the one day of brightness synchros just keep going like they haven't stopped that day has not stopped and like this i think what we're talking about right now and that those cards and these hexagrams are a really good example of it. anybody who is there is like dude <laughs> dude <laughs> That's all. and, and yeah, everyone getting... listening i'm not discluding anyone we're all a part of this moment and just so everyone knows i'm super into the this element, I got lightning bolt tattoos and it's kind of hard to see, but one has this life force goddess and one has like this uh, entropy force. Yeah. And to like, to me, a long time before I was into any of this stuff, I had a crazy experience where I almost got blown off of a mountain during a, a lightning storm at a music <laughs> festival. And it like, it was the first festival I ever went to first like psychedelic experiences, all this stuff was going on and like, I had the first experience of nature talking to me and I thought I was, I was on a lot of marijuana edibles <laughs> and yeah. in a tent trying to hold it down while it was blowing me around. And in that moment, it was like these beings, these th beings in the thunder were like letting me know right now you could decide that you wish you were home and you wish you could leave and you're miserable because there's no way to leave and the weather's so bad, or you can bite through right here, right now and know that even in this experience, you're not defeated. You're not lost. You're not going to have a bad time. You're going to come through the storm and the next morning it's going to be a mud pit swamp. And you're going to stomp around with, <laughs> with trash bags taped to your ankles to keep your shoes from being too soggy. And it's going to be so tight on your feet to keep the mud out that you're going to cut off the circulation to your toes for two days because <laughs> you can't take the trash bags off because they're the only ones you have. And your toes are going to go numb for two years. Whoa. <laughs> 
that's what happened to me. But like, that's what, that's sort of like me getting lost on a tangent, but I had this biting through moment yeah. early in my life. And that's why I got these tattoos before I was into any of this stuff, because uh, something told me it was very important to recognize that the power to create, to, the power to destroy and the power to make live. I want to say to make live, not even to create. Yeah. Those are within each of us at all times. So I wanted to symbolize it on each arm. That's so but rad. this biting through thing, this is really important. It represents decisive action, which is that next one step at a time. That's actually, it might feel like it's not decisive because you're programmed to think you need to take a huge leap and be all the way there. But decisiveness is just, I, I, I connect this to art all the time. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> People that say they are not creative are actually not decisive. Because the difference between an artist when they're in front of the blank canvas and the, someone who's labeled themselves as non-creative is that the non-creative looks at the canvas and says, I don't know what to do. And the creative says, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to make one brush stroke and then I make this brush stroke and then I make that brush stroke and we'll see. I, I only know a few brush strokes down the line, maybe I have very little idea how to do it, but I'm going to just keep doing the next thing that I can see. And then maybe I'll see the next thing after that. And that is creativity. You are creative. <clears throat> you are creative. That is how it works. It's decisiveness. And the, uh, the other aspect of biting through is tenacious devotion to the task. And I feel this, these two cards, I feel really strongly right now. And then we'll be done with me because I've been going on. But this time of year is the highest energy for me, probably because of the birthday thing, but also because spring and that nuclear bomb of life. Mm -hmm. And then biting through, uh, I could have told myself I worked all day. I don't, I had to go to the gym. I had to do some chores. I don't have time to jump on a live stream at eight o'clock when I should be tired and getting ready to wind down and go to bed. But instead I was like, no, I'm devoted to this task. Like, this is going to be awesome. This is what I want to be there. This people, like, I'm so, I feel so welcomed by the rogue tribe. You guys have been awesome to me. That's why I'm here again so soon me and Lindsay so are good best friends now like <laughs> <laughs> anyway I'm really stoked that I got those two he uh hexagrams they're yeah. beautiful two of my very favorite ones so that's perfect there you go Iching, I love that Iching's awesome I love that decision of lesson <laughs> too like you have illustrated with those stories of like you get to decide and then therefore you are creating in that moment and you can do that anytime no matter what the materials are um yeah, I love it. Those are great lessons. So who should we invite on? We have, I know um, Vanguard jumped in already and then left, I think, again. We had Gisela out there waiting. We had... Uh... We'll save you for last if we can, but if... if uh, I, I really... No I'm feeling... Uh, Gisela and Vanguard, if you guys are still around, we could do Gisela first and then Vanguard. And then if we have time for someone else. Yeah, we can we can rock through this. Got, we got this, guys. We want at least a couple of you to join in because in, it's fun to do as a circle. We'll have a journey out of it. Yeah. And if they're not still around, I'll repost the link again. If we don't get them, though, we've already been on an hour and a half and just wrapping up with uh, a toss oh. for you would still be really cool. We so. got to say la. Oh, yeah. Cool. What's up? All right. I just thought her and she should pop up any second. It's so cool because. Hi, Jasayla. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Yay, you're here! It's so I cool. made it. Jasela's been at the One Day of Brightness. She won the Catherine O'Shea session, and now here she is with the I Ching. I love it. <laughs> I did. I'm so excited. It's on Monday. That's so cool. Awesome. Did you already toss your coins, or? I did. All right. Would yeah, you... I redid it after I panicked after the first one. <laughs> um, so I got, it would be, I guess, broken, broken, unbroken, unbroken, broken, and then unbroken. And none of them were trips, so no changes? No, no changes. All right. Wow. <clears throat> Steady. Steady. Steady as, as it she goes. goes. We got <laughs> mountain. <laughs> we have uh, the top hexagram in this one is fire again. And now we've got fire over mountain. So that's a cool one. Ooh, uh, cool. Let me check what number that is real quick because I do not have everything memorized. Shame on me. 
56. All right. So while, why don't you guys kind of contemplate fire over mountain? Just among, like whatever you think while I pull out the card and, and reveal the imagery. Fire Ooh. over mountain. It's funny because where yeah, I so live, we've kept the it's fire constantly on, top on this fire. Whole way through so far, <laughs> and the mountain is now the the thunder shifted to mountain now. Yeah, that's interesting. What'd you say, Jasela? Where I live in Sonoma County is the place that's always on fire. Oh. So, like literally, the mountain behind my house was on fire last year. So I'm like, oh, fire over mountain, very appropriate. <laughs> it makes it makes me think of like you know the mountain is this. Um, place where you where like the earth meets heaven you know like heaven mm -hmm. heaven is always like at the top of the mountain um but it's also this very grounded like earthy stability right um and then the fire is like the um that passion we were talking about mm -hmm. so it's like the passion of being in touch with heaven maybe or something yeah it almost feels like rising to meet that because mm -hmm. for some reason when i think of mountains this seems so silly but i think of almost like walking onto a rock and then it becomes the mountain. Awesome. So I'm almost like thinking of like, yeah, the rising towards that. That's just how easily you elevate you guys yourself. Are pretty. Yeah, you know, I try. <laughs> no big deal. You're on the money, y'all. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we're gonna reveal it. It yeah. is called the Wanderer, it's number 56. That's extremely appropriate. <laughs> and of course granted it is. that we're moving from the point of biting through, now we've become that wise hermit type of tarot character. Not necessarily that this card represents a hermit. It represents wisdom. Fire over the mountain is spirit traveling across the earth. It's the adventure of life incarnate in matter. Hmm. That is what the wanderer is about. And so in a divination sense, what this is telling you is that solidly with no interruption, no change right now, what it's about for you is about uh, coping with unfamiliarity potentially coping with aloneness, but also finding your pilgrimage, finding what broadens your horizons. Uh, that can be an adventure that can be trapped. It's going to be an adventure, but it could also mean traveling. You could end up with the aloneness aspect because you're somewhere unfamiliar in a oh. traveling sense. But generally this is about, we're gonna continue from where we, where we were going from clinging to biting through, which is about taking the next steps. It's about keeping the movement alive, even in the moments of uh, uncertainty, especially unfamiliarity mostly, because as you bite through the stuff that was holding you back, you're always, it's always in unfamiliarity that's following that. It's the only next place you can go from the comfortable, from the known. So it's a great like it's it's an amazing how this flows because there's a bunch of other possibilities in here but to flow from biting through into this concept of fire over earth of the adventure of your life of being incarnate of realizing your divine essence inside your body and upon the earth that is an amazing next step for this progression and makes perfect sense especially for our group and especially so cool. for Jasela, I know too much. Yeah. I'm not saying anything, but <laughs> that's pretty cool. You do know so much. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, like specifically around this, I was like, how do you really feel about moving out of California as I like toss the coins? Because huh. it's always like, I've lived here my whole life. I'm like a total townie and I like want out. And there's some stuff going on in our home that's making me feel like it's coming sooner than I might think that I'm ready for. Uh, so yeah, this is like all very fitting for that situation. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How, like you cool. said, how appropriate. <laughs> yeah, it, it usually is. My life is just synchronistic like this. Yes. I love it. I love that Did message you know, too camera. of like applying, you know, you know, you have this fire and this passion and you know, you can like go straight through and just like do it and create it and have this journey too. And I feel like that can apply in multiple ways in your life. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's so cool. That's awesome. I mean, moving out of California, that is kind of like hilariously on the nose because of the fires. And everything. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> ev everything. And like I said, like literally, like I live at the base of a place called Rincon Valley. And last year, I, I kind of don't look around when everything's on fire. I just get out. And I came home and like everything on the hillside right behind our house was burned all the way to the sidewalk. So I was like, oh, it might be time to go. <laughs> yes. I really love that uh, you had the 
you already had your trigram ready or your hexagram ready coming in. Like, because of that, it makes me confident that we'll get uh, our other people in here without yeah. chewing up time. But uh, I'm curious, like just one more, at least one more question for you, not like to rush you out, but what was the biggest impetus for you to bite through and decide you got to get out of California of, all, of everything? Um, I'd say like the final straw was the pandemic um, because just where I live, I, I didn't realize I don't think like everyone around me and I started like losing friends and people and my family's gotten kind of weird. And I'm like, oh, like this place isn't what I thought it was at all. I've, I'm almost 36, I've lived here my whole life. And it just always seemed like this perfect place. And I feel like with how unreal the world has been, it's made my life and reality here very, very real. And I'm realizing what I really want out of the next step of my life and the freedom I want. And I have always told my partner, I'm like, I just want to like get rid of my stuff and like all of our stuff. And we're trying to actually right now, we're trying to buy a van to convert a van so we can travel. And so I'm like, I just want to like get rid of it all and sell my wares across the country, like out of a van, like my art as Catherine told me to sell. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is like very much, it feels like a really good, like you're doing it, like you're doing the right thing. Cause some days I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if this is the right thing or not. I Ching is the best for that. It will tell you right away if you're like, yeah, it'll, it tells you right here, you're doing it. Uh, one thing about the wanderer is you could kind of think of it as the fool of the tarot once he's oh, reached more okay. maturity. Yeah. Not that yeah. it's like, not the fool as in not an inexperienced part, but right. like since yeah, the fool no. goes through the whole journey of the tarot, this is the fool in the adventure, has gained wisdom, isn't perfected or anything, but a wiser fool, not exactly a fool fool, but that spirit of, uh, of motion. And this is like the... In my opinion, this is one of the most epitome of freedom cards that exists in the each. Yeah. <laughs> so that's rad. It, that makes I mean, me you just so have happy. to realize that the, the, free, the other thing about aloneness too, I love to point this out to people, is alone is phonetically the same as all one. All one. Because when we realize yeah. the oneness in all things, we realize that the being, the true deepest part of our being is always alone. And so we can be comfortable with any form of external aloneness, knowing that we never were any more or less alone. We've only ever been all one. Never alone. Mm. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> That's so cool. I love it. Yeah, I've done lots of things. I pull tarot cards every day. Never done I Ching before. Wow. So that's really cool. Yeah. New tool. I'm stoked. <laughs> and these little quarters, like I just looked down and they were just sitting here from my guest day of brightness when I was in here. And I'm like, oh, I guess it's meant to be. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> that's so rad. <laughs> that's perfect. Beautiful. Awesome. Embracing your destiny. I love to see that. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. We're doing it. <laughs> rad. Oh, I love that I got awesome. to see your face again today, Gisela. You too. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> yes. Bye. Bye. Great to meet you. I'm so you excited. You too. That was yeah, really you're cool. aw you're awesome. Like I have like just started listening to Rogue Ways a ton, so I've heard your voice a lot lately. Very yeah. comforting, <laughs> by the way. Um, so it's really nice to meet you. This was so cool. Thanks, Chance. Yay. Thanks. Thank you. The tribe expands. <laughs> All right. Who who wants to come in next? Again, I know Vanguard was on there. I think uh, Snake's got a hexagram ready. We could just see who pops up first. Yeah, guys, get in there. Come on. I know you want to come in. And Pause again, you can keep your... Before you even come in, I think you could choose whether your camera's on or off. So if you're like, my hair is like crazy, like just come in with voice. Even though we love your come beautiful as you faces. Are. Yeah. I just like put my hood on and be like, hey guys. <laughs> this is my first video with my uh, office redone and my new background. And I love how colorful it is behind me. It looks fantastic. It. Yeah. I love, it's funny too, because it like skews the perspective. Like something about that corner is like, makes you feel like you're like, not sure which direction is up or whatever, which I think is perfect. You know, you shouldn't be like so comfortable all the time. <laughs> Well, if no one else is going to jump in, um, we can do mine and see if people get, um, you know, more comfortable with jumping in by the time we're done. Yeah, that's fine. And if we finish on yours, that's okay too. I mean, True. we could, uh, we could do a try. We could always do this again sometime, like a community eaching thing. That's super fun. That'd be fun. And we I should love how 
totally do it on um, Rockfin too, over on Middle Path, because uh, then we can do those practices again for a little bit longer and like um, have that be a part of it too. I love it. Yeah, anytime. And we can maybe get straight into it instead of meandering through all the things that I wanted to tangent about for an hour. <laughs> but it was good because it like laid the foundation so everybody knew what was going on. We need we need those things. And then like each time it could be like a little bit more direct. But I didn't toss any coins because I wasn't even thinking about it. Do you want to? Do you have any handy? Actually, I do. Hold on. Ow. Yeah, we can do yours just on, on the fly right here. I'll even write it down for you. So all you have to do is toss. Sweet. Oh, Snake Jones is here, actually. Let's do that first. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I wanted Lindsay last, so <laughs> I don't know why. Something told me. It's just the way. All right, here's Snake. We always say Snake Jones knows. Snake Jones. He knows. What's up, Snake? <laughs> Man, I can't think of how many shows I've seen you in chats for of awesome shows, so it's cool <laughs> to meet you, man. What's up, dude? That's this rad. is fun. Yeah, this is really fun. I'm glad we decided to put this together. Yeah, like last so minute the, uh, synchro again. I got the 23 hexagram. No All changing my, lines, eh? I got a reverse um, the second throw. So the uh, second the second time you threw, you got all three of the same? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. So you have one changing line. You said you had 23? Yeah, I think so. That would be, uh, so uh, all heads was, uh, uh, my tails was broken line. So I threw two tails, and then I threw three heads, right? So that reverses it to broken line again. Yep, so I got it right. All broken lines, first five broken lines, and then the top one with the unbroken which I looked it up, I think it's hexagram 23. Uh, the second one was when you had a changing line? Mm-hmm. What okay, does that cool. mean? All right. That means, well, we'll find out. <laughs> There's no wrong answers with the I Ching, so that's cool. No. Okay, let me consult my reference material. So the three, one thing to note is whenever you have three unbroken or three broken that's yin and yang pure so mm -hmm. three unbroken is pure yang three broken pure is yang. pure yin so you've got pure yin as the bottom of it with uh mountain over the top so now the mountain has flipped <laughs> from the last card the mountain is now in the bo uh, the top position and this would be 23 like snake said and the uh, changing line in the second part, we'll get to that in a second. So we'll just start with 23, which I will pull out of my deck of cards right here. Did you happen to look up what that already was? Or are you already thinking yeah, about it? Yeah, I did, it? but I don't think it was, it was, I heard you read off, um, what's your name? It's kind of close, but it was Joe, maybe, for the splitting. What is this? This is mountain over? Earth. Earth? Uh, mountain is over yin on yin. this one. Yin. Okay. I'd rather go by, yeah, what you got, not just like the internet thing I found. I think some of them are good. Some of them are not. Yeah, I thought I got two lakes. I heard you guys I know, that. I was like, oh was God, like, he lost a finger. Right. Now he's in the <laughs> abyss. Like, shit is bad. Let's do it. <laughs> The card I'm looking for is always on the opposite half of the deck from where I start. If I start at the bottom, it's on the other. It's on the top, you know. Almost there. It's got to be. Yeah. yeah, it was literally like almost the very end of my stack. But like Snake said, it's splitting, or you could call it splitting apart. This is, let me just go ahead with the imagery here. Oops. Whoa. Splitting apart. It looks like you can a see it looks like pool. it's just a bunch of it's like the ground. You're just literally looking at the ground. How all the yeah. rocks hmm. are little pebbles and stuff. Nice. And maybe they used to be one big rock. <laughs> but but what this represents is the idea of uh, impermanence, separation, collapse. Sounds like tough stuff, but it's all nature stuff. It is just the elimination of the old. It is just the deterioration that leads towards uh, new life coming in. So whenever you are in this position with the I Ching, it's talking about 
A lot of times it's going to talk about the end of friendships or relationships. That's one thing it can talk about, but it can also talk about the end of a, of a major phase of your life going separate ways with some other important thing in the reality. Uh, it, inevitably though, it's just talking about the fact that no matter what, whatever it is, is going to have a collapse coming sometime. Like there's going to be a part where no matter how amazingly huge that boulder is and how beautiful that monolith is, time will turn it into sand in some awesome. way or another. And it's totally cool. It's actually, it and what's great about this one is when we look at the changing line, we'll be able to even get a little more lasered into what that actually is maybe specifying in terms of where the splitting could be happening. So let me pull up the changing line on this one as well. Give me a moment. And you can just reflect with us before we get into that while I'm looking it up. I split my finger off. Yeah. You see that? <laughs> I don't work at my job anymore. I haven't left my house in three weeks and my, my little mountain out here. It's pretty close. I'm I'm all for it. 24 seven out in nature. I was a pile of rocks I collected over the last week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I was thinking about how it could Crazy. be like zooming in so close to and you're in like hyper focus on something you'll notice all of the ways that it's like separating and splitting apart but when you're like way zoomed out it just looks like one thing and so it could be like this um idea of perspective and getting like really intensely into something i don't know if that works with this hexagram or not but no it does because the splitting apart is revealing the tiny little details the picture was zoomed in on the pebbles it was like a close-up yeah. of just a a square foot of dirt. Love it. My my wife last night told me my aura was mud brown. Oh God. Maybe yeah, you're like I'll, stirring I'll up all the shit to like get rid of it. I like it. I've been in the mud for the last two years. I mean that's I'm like earthy. That I kind of it. mud is good, yeah. That's the thing about auras. Everybody sees them differently. You know, because it's like coming through your lens. And so like if I was saw um aura looking like mud, it would be like some shit was going on, <laughs> like, like some darkness was leaving, or hopefully yeah, dude, leaving I and not like coming. It. Darkness is fine. No, I no, yeah, I like darkness, and I like stirring it up to get rid of it. Yep. This is so, cool. in the context of like the whole circle so far, too, the reason why we're flowing from the wander to splitting apart is because if you're gonna wander, then you need to leave where you were. True. That's, I mean, that that's kind of, uh, yeah. Huh. It's, that's about all there is to that. I mean, I, me and my wife sold her house of it. And did all that, and we moved out here in the middle of nowhere. Only been here about two months, so I hope I don't have to leave here again. That would suck. No, no, no. We're that was that, that, that was the have, previous person, and now you are the next like stage. Yeah, yeah you already did that. Yeah, you already Man, did that. that. Now we're stuff, seeing the changing line. Like, what it. did that transition into? And you'll love it because <laughs> this will make you laugh, but we'll get to that. First of all, all right. let me read the changing line, what the changing line means here. And remember, this applies to a larger journey, too, that all these cards are a part of. So the wanderer reaches this point where he has to leave behind the old and the familiar. And uh, yeah. the changing line says, you're feeling more and more isolated, yet those who are close are unable or unwilling to be supportive. Don't act out of fear or neediness. It is far wiser to adjust to loneliness than to surround yourself with inferior choices. Refrain from doubting or negative thinking, stay neutral, and suspend inner judgments as they simply add more weight to an already cumbersome situation. Hmm. <laughs> Yep. And what that changing awesome. line represents, uh, represents going into a, actually, so what happens is the uh, yin is changed into water in the next card here uh, for, where did I put that? Yeah, that's the anyway, circle. I'll show you I the think next I saw one. that graph. Each one transitions to another one, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So because cool. we're changing just one line, the thing that it's changing into is very similar to, it's only one uh, line different and it's the second line so that means the top which is mountain is staying the same and we're we're transitioning to card number four here which is called right. youthful folly and 
this is also not a negative card, but people could maybe take it as negative, but it's actually a great card, kind of going back to that idea of agnosis. Hmm. Like you, the image of the, of the walking on the tightrope and looking out of balance is what you're actually seeing is somebody who's about to learn really quick. Yeah, they're about to learn really yeah they're about to learn balance really quick one way or the other because they've walked themselves out on a t a uh high wire so there's only one way and that's forward mm -hmm. and uh it's gonna and so that's what youthful folly does it for us it puts us into situations we're not completely ready for so that we can grow and adapt in that trial by fire and so youthful folly looks like oh man i i don't want to be in impulsive or immature i don't want to part of the meaning of this card is bluffing but you can take it as fake it till you make it as well and that's not a negative <laughs> thing it's like you're beta testing who you want to be and so wow. that means it's, you're not going to get it right but you are going to push forward and you are going to walk on that tightrope and you are going to take the risk because otherwise you're going to be sitting there looking at your busted ass pile of rocks going i wish they were still a pretty statue or whatever they originally were and if you want to wander on and and reach and, and find yourself back at the clinging again someday, then you gotta. The only way uh, forward is through, right? The only way out is through. That's sort of where youthful folly is taking us right here. So it's actually a great thing because the biting through aspect, where we're taking just the next step, that we we don't know all the steps ahead of us because we're learning as we go, and so that's how you are in the tightrope too. You don't know how you're going to get across that thing, but you are Man. going to take the next step because you have no all, choice. All that's on, been on my mind is it's uh, it's sink or swim out, sink or swim out here, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, you're awesome. Gonna, you're going to swim. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I love it. You only move forward, just Definitely. like you said. That is awesome. <laughs> and I'm doing great. Oh, by the way, the spring is wonderful. The explosion of life is just finally you look right? great it's like radiating off of you it's awesome thank you yeah <laughs> good energy i think that's why the uh the reed chose to give you the uh the part of the hero's journey that is seen as the difficult or quote unquote bad part because you're the guy that's like i know exactly what this part is i'm ready for it i embrace this part it's not actually bad i am ready to make the required changes for myself that's how the vibe i get off of you it's cool like this is a, a great these are this is a great position to be in on that high wire because like i said it's like you're literally going to evolve that is the this only community thing is great. That you can do everybody you guys are great you just really are it's a beautiful thing there are times it's tough <laughs> balled up in a corner <laughs> can't okay, right on thank you so much chance hey Lindsay. thank you snake always good to see you sir everybody in chat how you doing <laughs> have fun hi gordon <laughs> i'll let you guys go thanks right. a lot man yeah bye snake awesome. yeah that was awesome well i i tossed my coins while we were doing that so i have my my two hexagrams because i did get a changing line so um okay perfect so i got 20 to begin with and the third line was changing so that changed it into 53 Cool. Okay. So I'm going to dig these out real quick and um, maybe be faster than before, but I mean, I'm sure you have even more thoughts about the journey up to this point. Well, it's pretty rad. Yeah. I like when we were talking about this earlier, I had like the conceptualization of what you were describing, you know, you were like, let's get some people in and then we'll do it in like in a certain order. And then we'll like have this like circuit or this journey or whatever. And I was like, okay, oh, hey, cool. Like I can feel that and whatever, but actually seeing it like play out has been really uh, epic because again like I was saying you know at the one one day of brightness or at uh when you were describing doing this with a group it's like everybody there is getting these messages and getting these um things that are really specific to them you know and reflecting on that and like getting getting that feeling and then but all the people and you know Nicholas just said it in the chat too it's like this, these really are for all of us too we can all look and see you know at what point it, we are uh, in our own journey in this way or where we just came from some of these things or where we might be headed towards some of these things. Um, you know, and like Snake was just saying, like, we're not, and we have said actually multiple times throughout this, like, we're not alone. We're all doing this together, you know, and that's part of having a community is knowing that you're doing this along with other people and 
the people just beyond you, just like Howdy Mikasa was saying, the people like one rung up, maybe like they can kind of help pull you up to the next rung and you can look back and see who's coming up the step right behind you and help pull them up to the next step. And so, you know, we're all we're all moving together. And I just love that about this, how well that has illustrated this and how everyone is actually part of it, even if you didn't jump on. And even if you're, you know, out there wondering which hexagram you actually got, because <laughs> you're still confused or whatever, like we're all still getting these messages together, which I think is really cool yeah and it's funny you mentioned howdy because he's my next episode <gasps> that, uh some one of these nights i'm gonna produce and put out that's right <laughs> definitely such a tomorrow night actually yeah yeah it was so fun so i love everybody, that guy everybody go check okay, that out so if where you're we listening from, to this yeah that mm -hmm. should hopefully come out thursday or friday we'll see soon but definitely soon soon uh, the next card, the, the card that Lindsay gets is 20, as she said, and that is air over yen. So yen comes back into the supportive role again, and this is contemplation. So it's very related, in my opinion, to that idea of the wanderer or the hermit. But this is the point where you kind of have reached a high point, uh, or at the very least, there's something high up that's illuminating. And in fact, in the imagery of this card, it shows a forest that would be dark and um, impossible to navigate, but the light of the moon is the guide for this wanderer <laughs> in this card. Isn't have, this artwork so rad too? Yes. And you have no idea how much the moon is my guide. Like at the There you go. It's perfect core. for Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> we nailed it. That's rad. So at the point where we've uh, gone across the, the high wire and now we see some, the light has returned, you know, the moon has come out <laughs> in its full brightness right in the middle of the darkness, which is that youthful folly. <laughs> this is the point where through all of the journey, through the difficulty of splitting apart, through being in a big, dark, scary, unknown of this forest, the, uh, we reach the phase where eventually it's going to be a full moon. <laughs> one of these days, it might have been a new moon two weeks ago, but now it's a full moon, and even though it's the dead of night in the woods, we can see our way. And so the contemplation card represents like detachment, actually. So that's important when you're looking at the youthful folly, when you're coming out of youthful folly, is that you'll actually stay in folly if you are not practicing some level of detachment for the person that you just were. Otherwise, you're going to be like, I can't believe what an idiot I was to go out there on that tightrope. I can't believe I came out into the woods at night with no flashlight. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. But you're out there either way, and you need to be detached from the part of yourself that's judging, the part of yourself that is keeping your, your you know, perspective of yourself, your worldview and your self-view locked in to something lesser. Yeah. So in the solitude... This is the point of the solitude where you finally increase your understanding and you're finally integrating through this deep reflection that the loneliness, the, the loneliness has become all oneness. Basically you finally turned alone into all one. And <laughs> so this, <laughs> it's so cool how this progression goes because we're about is. to go into what 53 is, ah. but Lin Lindsay, while I pull open the book, please talk more about contemplation and 20. Yes. Well, I, you know, right now I'm in this like phase where I've always, it's really hard to explain, actually. I'm doing what I've always done, but maybe that detachment part is the key where I have like the most detachment from it that I've ever had. And because of that, because of the ability to really see like the moonlight through the dark forest and just accept it for whatever it is, not judge it, not think about it too much, not like worry, not like feel attached to any aspect of it, then I'm able to get like way more clear light from it. Um, and like, and it's not just and even a little bit to do with me it's like to it's like bringing that back to everybody else too. I'm like, all right, you guys, the moon's like this and like, or whatever. And, um, you know, I don't think that you can stand in that dark forest and see that moon clearly unless, like you said, that you have that detachment. And if you have any level of attachment to all of these preconceived ideas, again, like you said, whether for yourself or other things, it's just clouds, 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 and you don't see the light at all. You're just in a dark, dark forest. You might, like, project some shit, you know, and pretend like you saw some light, but you're not going to see the actual light. Yeah, it's cool that you zeroed in on detachment 
because of all of the changing lines, that's actually what this line means. Huh. Because what we're looking at here, it, what's cool about the I Ching is you can think about it from the basic, simple archetypal level of a line and an unbroken line. And at the bottom trigram here, we had three broken lines, pure yin. That means whatever is below is flowing up inward, upward into the, the top. Oh. Like there's a, a clear channel between. Mm-hmm. Now detachment comes in because that third line, the top of the bottom trigram has now become a solid unbroken line, which means now it's hitting something. Mm-hmm. Stop there. There's detachment. That's the detachment that occurs. Mm-hmm. And what it's specifically the type of detachment that it's pointing out is not like that you're separating yourself from others or, rea- or reality or truth. It's more about meditation and self-reflection and just pure witness state, pure observation state. Um, This is what allows you to, even in the darkest forest that you might be in, to actually have the experience of being at home. You're at home within yourself. That's what really detachment does. Because uh, why you would ever need detachment would be to not be so rocked by the wind, you know, by the storm. (laughs) And when you're at home, the storm feels fine. You're like, wow, that's out there. Wow. Listen to that. Wow. Lightning. Mm -hmm. But if you, that's, you feel safe because you're in your little shell, but actually if you're at home within yourself, then you know that there's no external storm that can harm you. You are the storm. And that's what the integration through reflection is really trying to tell you. And funny, I say you are the storm. That was like what the thunder gods or whatever the hell (laughs) were trying to tell me when I was on the mountain, deciding whether or not I was going to be terrified or stoked. And I I went with stoked, actually. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. It's how you just brought it all the way back. Changes it (laughs) full circle, too. No, here's what brings it full circle, actually, because this it really does come full full circle here. Uh, The third line changing means that the yin that was at the bottom becomes earth again, Hmm. back to a foundation of earth with air above. So this card is 53 which is development. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Amazing image right there, actually. That just blew my mind. So this is the point. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point of the hero's journey where you've made the gradual progress. It's literally a card about slowly, but surely it's literally calling back to biting through <laughs> one step at a time, wandering through the woods, just sticking with the light and letting that be the guide and just continuing to see what you can see and do what you can do. So development is about adaptability. You've come to this point and now you've had to adapt to be able to uh, progress your way back to a place where you feel the passion of the clinging again. So we're, we're ending at development and you, I always like to consider these a full circle. So we've gone from there and therefore the next card in our circle comes back to the clinging Hmm. comes back to, because once you've, there's nothing that that brings out your passion more than than uh, owning your own progress, owning your own adaptability, being a thousand steps along a path of one step at a time instead of five steps along. That ignites your passion. That's why I was so excited to get in here with you guys tonight because uh, the, that's kind of where I'm at right now is in this sort of clinging phase coming through development into clinging and biting through and we're in all these phases at all times True. right yeah all of these are, are are dynamic that our consciousness can take anytime any day but also every time you use the I Ching it shows you a different way that that circuitry could be arranged and I I think that it's showing you the way that that circuitry is arranged right now for you and for all of us here so I'm glad that once again, it's never let me down. It made sense and it gave me a story to tell. And all I did was just tell the story. And all of us can use the uh, I Ching in this way. But I love the deck I've got because these images help you get that sort of story. And maybe I'll hold them all up again to take yeah, us through it. Do it. The clinging, fire over fire, pure inspired passion and joy and flow biting through, leaving that known, that comfort zone, and biting through into the unknown, taking decisive action to heal or bring about the change that is required, wandering into aloneness, traveling away from where you were, going into the dark, 
um, taking the journey, realizing impermanence, splitting apart from the place that you came, the people that were there, the you that you were, getting in too deep in the dark and scary woods at night with no torch on the high wire. Only way to go is forward. The next step at a time becomes not only uh, your path, but your only option. <laughs> Contemplation, the wisdom gained from going through that harrowing experience of youthful folly and development, the phase of integration that brings you back into your passions with a new perspective on just why you fucking love life so much. Yeah. Because life is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's and there you so go. Rad. That's the story for today. And then you go back yeah. and you get your passion to lead you to the next phase of the cycle of your journey and you just keep going forever and ever and ever and i love it i love how you brought that all together i love the pieces of the narrative i love how there's a person who helped represent each piece for all of us to reflect upon you know to let that really like uh solidifies it i think for you like we were talking about how your imagination is so powerful you have this like person there and you get to like feel their element of the story and how they're presenting it or whatever you can like relate to it and imagine it a little bit deeper and that's like such a beautiful part of this process and super cool it the coolest part to me is that what was it just like was that this morning or like last night that we were like oh yeah i don't you want to do like a night ichi thing tomorrow or whatever like <laughs> <laughs> here we are <laughs> and it was this profound and beautiful journey so i think that's so awesome and really really beautiful um and i want to both give you a chance to say any uh you know final remarks and messages to the people out there and also absolutely i think everyone here knows where to find you but just in case someone's listening who's like oh my god this is so rad like i need to know and they don't know yet then share where people can go to find more of you and support you and connect with you and all of that good stuff Interversepodcast.com. It's got everything there. I do have a Patreon for extended content and I will be most likely migrating to Rockfin soon. I've got my meeting with them tomorrow. So yeah. wish me luck there. We're going to try to negotiate a good deal. It's Don't really awesome. know what I'm getting into. Youthful folly time. Yep. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but I have uh, nothing but good referrals from awesome people I know that have started working with Rockfin. So excited about that to have an alternative to the ridiculous Patreon platform that, I mean, they've done a lot of stuff to shoot themselves in the foot, but for me, whenever they banned James Corbett, when he didn't even have any content on Patreon, just a link to his website, that was it. People could support him there, but he wasn't even putting anything on there. <sighs> and they banned him for that and said, you're, you receive Patreon money. So your everything you do is subject to our terms and conditions, even outside of Patreon. That's I was just ridiculous. like done with you. Yeah. I'm so done with that. So Hopefully, uh, you know, wish me luck with all that because there will be, you know, I'm sure you probably are aware, like there's going to be some work to migrate some content and come up with a new plan, but I am ready to adapt into some new styles of stuff. So I want to tell people, uh, this is my first time doing a remote I Ching. Wow. Like, to be honest, I've only ever done <laughs> it with friends in a circle in real life. Like this is, I've never done it like this before with, uh, I mean, I don't want to call anyone strangers, but people that are new to me. Yeah. Although I've been seeing Snake Jones pop up for a year. All kinds yeah. of places. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that dude gets around some cool podcasts. That's true. And uh, doesn't he have something? Does he go on weaving? He's often on spiders? weaving spiders. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm new to them. I haven't started to check them out yet, but I know that they've also run in circles with people I like. So I got to check them out too. But uh, what I want to say is that this is my first time doing this in this way. And I really want to sharpen the skill. I do want to deepen my journey with the I Ching. I would love to do sessions one-on-one -on -one with anybody out there. You can email me chance at interversepodcast.com because it's a new thing. There'll be, you'll never get a better deal on it. <laughs> we'll work something out and uh, let me practice with you and see how that's going to go. I want to offer this to people. Also remote biofield tuning sometime in the future would be a cool service to offer, but I need guinea pigs for that too. So maybe uh, if you want to be a guinea pig sound healing remotely, we can do that as well. Yes. Lots of stuff. Or just if you want to talk to me in a general counseling sense, and I'll do my best to bring witness to your situation, be honest about your situation. And if there's anything I can think of that you could do that might help you uh, in 
an exercise sense or just a, a mindset sense, I'll offer that as well. I have no credentials, no qualifications. I'm just a guy here in my house in the back room on my computer talking into a microphone. But, <laughs> but I really like you. I really like you out there, whoever you are. I think that you've got infinite potential. I want to help you see that. I can already see it and I don't even know what you look like yet because I know that that's what we are at our core is infinite potential. Not that anything is possible. Like I couldn't become uh, an African American three-year-old girl right now in this reality, but in a sense, anything is possible because other than changing the immutable reality that we share in a sort of game breaking way, you can really step through the portal of your imagination to become anybody you want, be anywhere you want. And, uh, that's that's real. That's the real magic. Hop through that imagination portal. If you want, I will help you open it wider so you can fit all your stuff through and go to an awesome place. And uh, the great thing about this part of the wanderer and going into the unknown and the quest for truth is no matter how scary it is and what you might think you're leaving behind, you can never leave the truth behind. It'll always be there. And so it'll show up in a new form if it's a, a person, place, or thing or it will adapt itself to fit your new perspective. And truth can never go away. Whatever is real in your life, any love that is real will always be there and will always be love. And there's nothing you can lose. There's just, all you can really lose is uh, <laughs> lose peace of mind. Yeah, or illusion. Because <laughs> you're already where you're <laughs> supposed to be. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's all I got. That was a lot, actually. That was a Thank lot. You. Yeah, that, that was its own show, just like condensed into like a couple minutes. But I really, um, I really appreciate it. And I really want to say what is probably going to be really cool is when you're doing like biofield and eaching in one session, um, you know, and stuff like because you can like help like heal people, ground people, it'll get them into like the best space and then go into like the message or vice versa or like end cap both sides with a little bit of biofield tuning and like um i don't know i just like was imagining that while you were describing it i'm like what a beautiful session that would be to like have this work done and get these messages and like really have like a full rounded experience but um that was my strategy here was the to, to start with yeah. setting the tone yeah and then getting people familiar with their subtle energy or uh, if they're already familiar with it just giving them a moment to dial it in mm -hmm. and then go from there. I think you can't really go wrong when you just start with those type of intentional self-reflective practices. It's a definitely a good way to, to start anything, <laughs> your day especially. <laughs> True that. Well, we know you're going to be back for many times and especially also on Middle Path where we'll do some stuff over there too. Um, and you're going to be on Rockfin soon. And I know you already said and, and you know, gave so much. But now that I've talked again, I have to offer you any final words. Do you have anything else you want to throw no, out we're there? we're good. All right. I'm, I'm out. I'm out of here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's time to go. All right. Thank you, Chance, for everything. And fellow travelers of the path, it is a beautiful thing. And this has been your analog electric concentric dose of wisdom, according to the master of the universe, Chance Garden. Chance, thank you so much for being here on Rogueways today. And we will see you again soon, I'm sure. Always a blast, Lindsay. Thank you. <laughs> Turning through time and space, rolling around, creating and undoing patterns as we sway and drift, pulling and tugging at some threads while simultaneously weaving others, seeing through any sort of window can give us the most exquisite view of our path and promise, though not every view we take in is met with the highest discernment of our souls and hearts in order to bring the best outcome. It takes deep, quiet, and open space within to truly grasp the largest fractals within the nuances of self, seek deep, hone your discernment, and until you can view any truth with no attachment, travel well, aim for balance, and always look inside first. Mwah. I heard the Freemasons called you. Man, they at it again. Huh. And I'm out to tell the truth once more. That's right. It's on the cracking. Unknown in the house. Hey, P-O-G-Z. That's right. Hitting Let the stereo know. near you. Truth is the you best know. thing. And it's, it's on. Uh. Yo, 
I once thought that I wanted to get them on track, but to something more bigger than that, something lurking, waiting to blow this state right off the map, a hidden agenda related to September, doves carved up on the wall next to the highway, up in the concrete, right rolling home next to where I stay, with state's destruction, like he Martin malfunction, while NORAD's in a mountain anticipating our next move, my heart's jumping and I'm like, fuck waiting, while cricket taxes are burning a hole in my pocket, with a dollar bill in the pyramid that's watching, instead of having a capstone on top of it, to have a nod with the fast surprise, while you're flossing it, greedy niggas jocking it, politics plotting it, so who you vote for, really doesn't mean shit, so save your energy from being drained by the enemy, swollen bones and freemasonry, envisioning dreams of them chasing me. Scrolling bones and Freemasonry, envisioning dreams of them chasing me. Scrolling bones and Freemasonry, secret agencies with a plan to dominate all of man. Check the records of DIA, strange murals and paintings similar to the ones next to the highway. With pyramids and flames underneath them looking like they're about to fly away. I can't be tripping, but it sounds like I'm on acid. Most people slipping, taken below DIA held captive in the near future where they won't hesitate to reinstate new laws for a bigger cause. I'm talking about establishing civilian concentration camps. Introducing the military's labor programs Expand your mind just a little bit Forget the little shit Before you witness the belittlement of your people Expand your mind just a little bit Forget the little shit Before you witness the belittlement of your people Pay attention to stretch the truth The script that he's fitting is true Pay attention to what's going on Or what might happen to you When it's happening too Cellular communication monitor Behavior studied and controlled Through chemicals bombing the nerves Thomas murder Jesus ain't got anything to do With the religious cynics Where experiments cage and lace in terms of accepting limits, things I can't explain to the sky when I'm in the Rockies. Chakra systems limited due to the voltage overhead pop. Mind control victims slap clips and machine guns for recess. FCC will help us speak less, manipulate us through weak feel right nonfiction with the CAA trying to kill me filthy. Talking about the underground facility at DIA, no one feel that place laced with hints. Notice whenever I return home, lack some references in a new world based on a capstone. Employ in area 51 work is the bill, and I don't mean to rant. In the face of an emergency, it doubles as a FEMA camp. The reactions lose your trickery repeated through history no rads listening in using technology tracking where you piss on my paranoid or just facing the facts better watch what you say it's another day under the patriot act <laughs> anything else. 